and he'll, for whatever reason, just not cover the tight end. Uh, but other than that, it's very easy to play. But you can see they're running into each other, and he just gets in his way and just basically just sets a pick for a very easy play. And, you know, I guess once the, uh, the running back comes into the safety's area, it just completely stops. And the B route will get uh, forgotten completely. For the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor, MMOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing the mad cheese as always, and a little under the weather. I hope you guys are having a good holiday season. Uh, I lost my voice yesterday at the Eagles football game at Eagles uh, Eagles Giants. Left my voice in the stadium in the fourth quarter, uh, which is you know if you're a good fan, that's what you're supposed to do. That's what the home field advantage is. You're supposed to help out your team. But uh, since it's the day after Christmas and I don't really have a good voice to uh, record a new video, I decided this is the perfect opportunity to uh, to give you guys a late Christmas present and give you guys a free full breakdown of what's probably my favorite offense right now in the Baltimore Ravens now I try to do these type of videos once a month so if you guys want me to continue to do that please make sure to be a subscriber hit the like button let me know in the comment section I stopped doing this particular type of video for a little while because I had some people complaining the people that actually were buying the books would complain that um, you know they pay for this and now I'm giving it away for free so this is not the full Ravens breakdown this is more like a third of the Ravens at most uh, because I still like this is all going to be gun formations. I know most people like to run gun formations anyway, but this is pretty much my favorite formations out of their gun sets. Uh, but the best part of the Ravens is probably their pistol playbook formations anyway so if you guys want to see more from this you can always check out i got the full breakdowns on all my subscription services whether it's patreon whether you hit the join now community button on uh youtube here you can get the full three hour video of the ravens or you can always get the ebooks at madmoneyshot.com links in the description all that stuff link in the top pin comment all that stuff if you guys want to see the full version but i have to save some stuff for the people that actually pay for these things so i can't give away the full versions anymore i don't feel right about doing that but if you want me to continue to do these like hour-long previews of what my ebooks and you know full-length video look like make sure to be a subscriber hit the like button let me know in the comment section other than that let's go and skip right into the video next up we have the old one trap it's one of the better inside runs especially if your opponent has like a spread defense as you can see i mean it really just um you know if it's a tightly packed box it doesn't necessarily work that much because you kind of need space but they can still um you can see i mean chris jones is getting he's shooting right in pretty much every single time and i'm still getting around him because of the trap block as they're gonna they're gonna pick him up eventually. I just have to be patient enough for that uh, trap block to come over. You know, they just they they turn Chris Jones free, which is never really a great idea. But you can see that it's still it's still working as they're just they're just letting him in, and then I'm just getting right past, and I'm getting close to five every single time. So very consistent inside run. You can also motion across Cal Terra here, which is something that will give you what looks like another lead blocker. You can see that it even helps even more to pick up Chris Jones as he comes in. Uh, because you know he's uh, he's obviously a problem. I'm going to do that one more time because, like I said, this is helpful to just have him in the way to the point where you know at least he's um, somebody could pick him up immediately if he gets in too fast because he is a menace. But I would only use that if uh, you're facing an elite defensive tackle like this. Next up, we got the bench swap. Oh, I'll just pick random. This is another play where you can just put the A route on a streak. And uh, you really have two options. I mean, I could work the um, the left side, which is really just a bench concept. Uh, the Y route and the X route, both are pretty good uh, against man or zone in that scenario. Or you can work the other side where I have the street pulling back any zones in the area and the, uh, the RB route and the B route will both get open uh, underneath, uh, you know, against pretty much any zone coverage as well. And this is probably a better zone beating play. I'm going to move the ball over because this is going to be best to run from a hash mark to the short side of the field. I find the side with the with the A route uh, pulling back the zone is probably best. Although there we actually had a man coverage and I didn't make a, a good read at all. If it's man, the only thing you really have on this play is the Y and the um, the X route. That's more of a man beating side. As you can see here, we get um, a man coverage. And it's 50-50 when it comes to the corner route. I mean, I don't think the corner route's really that great. Uh, I think the Y route's probably best. This looks like a man coverage. The Y route's going to be your best man beater. It's just a simple out route. Um, but uh, you can always um, look for the X route, as I'm guessing we're going to have another another man coverage here. Although that was actually a cover for quarters. You can tell by the way that they collapsed on the corner route. But, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the play. I mean, this is a good dink and dunk play. I'll try to focus on this side because you can see how that the, the, the zone chuck 
on the, I think it was the streak or the corner route, really gets the running back open a lot. And that's probably the best receiver on the field, except for the B route, which is also going to be good against someone if I run from a hash mark like this, as we get what looks like a cover two. And we make the play because the the streaking tight end didn't get back and far enough, quick enough to get the, um, to get the, um, the safety pull back, which is why that worked. And like I said, I can pretty much just take this running back all game for whatever I get out of that really quick, easy throw. But a good play nonetheless. Next up, we got the bench edge dig. A random. Another play. Put the A round in streak. Put the Y round in drag. And you got your zone beater on the right side and your man beaters on the left side. As we have a man coverage there. You can just split the field in half. The streak doesn't really do anything other than pull back coverage for the for the B route. As I forgot to put the um, the Y round in drag. But um, I mean, the 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 two left. The, the, even though they're man beaters on the left side, they also beat zone. As you can see there, that was a zone. Here we got a cover two, so it's going to be an easy route to the B route. Um, but anytime, you know, uh, typically if it's like a cover three or anything like that. Next up, we got the corners and goes. This is a, a man coverage play. We'll go with man zero. Basically, the A and the Y route are really good man beaters. I'm just going to check and release the uh, the running backs or the running back. As you can see, I'm going to need that for um, you know whatever instant blitzer comes in. But uh, but the but the Y route and the A route are both very good uh, man you know beating plays just for a couple of yards, uh, but you could also put the um, the X route on a check and or um, sorry um, put him on a uh, smart route and it'll shorten the route and then he'll beat man coverage very easily down the field as well. So very easy one play touchdown against cover zero. Next up we got the counter Y, <laughs> just a good run in the opposite direction. Uh, as you can see, I mean, a lot of runs are really just inside runs or, you know, up the center or to the left of the quarterback because that's where the handoff is. But this year gives you an opportunity to go the other way. So it's always nice to at least have a run play like that in your arsenal so that your opponent can't just slide their defensive line in the direction of the most likely ball carry. And uh, you can really have some success going in the opposite direction, which is, you know, it's not a huge run, but if your opponent is over committing to one side, then it can be. As you can see, I haven't been caught for a loss. I just typically, um, you know, I'm not getting a ton of yards. Uh, but like I said, it's nice. It's only really going to work if your opponent really, um, you know, really commits to one side or really starts sliding their defensive line in that direction. Except we got the lead read option. Another good run play. You got a, a pull or a, um, a pulling um, tight end coming across that uh, can really help lead the way for the quarterback. You're really just watching the uh, the um, the read defender, which is kind of kind of hidden here. As you can see, there's not really. I guess it really is not a read defender, as I'm not really um, having any uh, obstruction from keeping with the quarterback just about every single time, and that's really where the big play is. Although you can see there, that guy kind of shot down on it. So I guess you're supposed to watch the M defender, which is t isn't typical. There's typically a read defender somewhere on the play, but that tight end pulling across makes this a very effective run play. Uh, based off the fact that who is typically the read defender would be this defensive end above the A tight end. He just gets washed away every single time. And you have an opportunity. I mean, I haven't had a loss yet with the quarterback. Uh, you'll probably want to put your quarterback on or your ball carrier on conservative. I would say maybe the only thing uh, because you will. I'm going to do I'm just going to keep doing this until I fumble because eventually you will. But you really have, um, you know, anytime you're running with the quarterback, and you can hand it off with the running back too. I mean, you can go the complete opposite direction by holding the A button and handing it to the running back, which has been, uh, honestly, been there pretty much every single time. And like I said, I mean, the quarterback's probably the much bigger play, but uh, the running back's there. As you can see, there's there's multiple options here, and they both go in wide looping angles in opposite directions, which makes this play uh, very tricky for people to try to defend. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to force uh, the computer's hand here. I'm going to go to my coaching adjustments, and I'm going to set the um, the ball care option defense to conservative so that it focuses on the quarterback. And let's see if that changes anything. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to do this again. Like I said, you can see that that defender is shooting down now, which is about the only look um, that you would get. But even with that, I mean, the tight end is coming over to try to help out with that. If he gets over there a little bit quicker, might actually cut that off. We're going to do that one more time. Like I said, there, the option defense isn't there. You know what I mean? It's like even though I said it, you can see it still isn't necessarily the most effective, uh, which most people will have their option defense set, but you can see that guy coming across 
really picks that up and makes it still a very viable option as I finally fumble, but still got seven yards. That's why I always want to run towards the boundary, or run towards being out of bounds, so that that doesn't happen as we finally as he finally stops us. But yeah, I guess the twenty is the read defender, even though it really isn't um, displayed that way, and it's not very consistent as you can see. He wasn't really doing his job there as we get another five yards. Next up, we got the mesh spot. Go random again. This is another play where every route's pretty much going to get open except for that streak. We're going to really work. I mean, if could throw it to this guy right away, which you've probably seen me do a million times in my gameplays, that route will get open immediately under man or zone. You just have to throw it immediately after you hike the ball. Um, although I have noticed that, you know, people can hard flat that, but the drags can pretty much get open against anything too. Hard flats can stop the drags, but then you can always just wait for the running back to turn up the field and he'll get open against hard flats. Um, you could also throw to the B route here, which will get open against hard flats. Although there I kind of forced it because I just wanted to show it. Uh, the drag is really, a lot of users will chase the drags and a lot of times I'll just leave the B route just wide open, which is really what I'm going to try to attack if the user does play the drags aggressively. But then, like I said, you also have the running backs. So there's really four routes here that can go up against just about anything, just as long as you read um, the leverage or the spacing. Like the B route, if the defender is behind them, he's probably going to get open. If it's in front of them, it could be a problem. As you can see right there, they're kind of split the, the two uh, zones there. So it really just depends on, you know, are they in front of the guy or behind him, like the drags. You know, that guy, the wire out there, he's kind of in front of him. But I can come back to it and try to make a play. I mean, it's not something where I'm going to get picked just as long as, you know, I throw it where, where I have a, a straight lane to the receiver. I should usually be able to give myself more of a chance than a defender. Next up, we got the PA deep cross. I'm going to go to pick that, and then we're going to pick random on defense. The A route, I'm sorry, the B route's really the uh, the best man beater on the play, but I'm going to make some adjustments where I'm going to create myself some other options. We're going to put the A route on an in route or a drag. It's really up to you. But I find that streaking the X route and putting the A route on a five-yard in is going to give you three levels of passing, including uh, this guy here, who's not really going to beat man coverage too well. As you can see, we had a man coverage there. That I should have really held that for the uh, for the B route. But let's go and let's do that one more time. Like I said, this is my first read, though. I'm watching this tight end. If he's there, I'll get that. You know, I'll take that all day, give myself a nice check and release. You can see the tight end does turn into a blocker, which is nice, and it will help you out down the field as well. That typically only beats zone, though, where the other two routes are a little bit better when it comes to beating uh, man coverage. As you can see right here, the B route, you know, that, that, that X route is the MVP because it pulls back the coverage to the point where this guy can get open, and you can get that route all day. So you're really just working from front to back, but the... Um, the Y route only beats zone where the other two routes will beat man coverage. Next up, we got the RPO read counter stick. Let's play here. The, the fullback, or the, uh, the tight end rather, is a really good play against zone. That was a cover three. You can see how I can just hit that for a good catch and run against just about any zone coverage. Other than that, though, I don't find that the, the, the B route, I mean, it can beat man coverage. You can see I can throw it to, the, to a man underneath a man defender pretty quick. But that would be pretty much your read. You got your man beater in the B route. You got your zone beater in the RB route. And you can always uh, run the counter, which is probably the worst part of the play. As you can see right there, I really didn't get much. Although that's, you know, that's highly part of um, part of the, I mean, that's part of the read. You can also hold it with the quarterback. You can see that might be even worse. If I'm calling this play, it's not really to run either one of these. You can see the, the run play just lets too many people in. It almost operates like a screen play. But you do have some good passing options, especially if you're trying to run this like around the goal lines. I'm really just trying to try to get something out of the ground play, but it's really not there. It's really more about the, um, the flat and the comeback route. Next up, we have the curl pivot dig. Another play which really just a lot of man beating routes. I'm gonna go and move the ball over because these go in the opposite direction. The first, or the other play that I showed was really crossing the field, where this here is really more about the uh, the zig route. And you also have the tight end. You have that high low between the the, the drag and the uh, the deep end on the tight end. So you have a good zone concept there as well because obviously I'm not gonna get all man beating routes or all man all man coverages because I keep picking random. So you do have some good zone concepts, although there obviously that didn't work out. But uh, yeah, here this looks like a man coverage, and that RB route is going to be probably my main read in that zig. Uh, the curls are good routes, but you have to pre-diagnose where you're going to hit this ball because um, you know this doesn't look like a man coverage at all. But we got you got to kind of know where you're going with the ball right away because you know that's that's really the, the purpose of this play. As we get another man coverage, you got to make those decisions pre-snap. Next up, we got the four verticals. This play here, you can run it as is, front to back read. You're basically just reading the crossing patterns as you have the A route, then the Y route, and even the RB route after that. Um, there are other options too, like if you have a really spread look like this, I can just put the A route on a streak, and you'll see how you know he can be open uh, right at the seam there. Although that linebacker did a really good job of bumping him off. 
um, which is something that you have to watch out for. But not everybody has a guy like Nick Bolton, who I'm sure that is is who that is. But here we go, cover two. Like I said, you can see that streak. This is such a spread wide formation that a lot of times there's a simple streak from the tight end up the center will get wide open if you see how far apart these safeties are. That's all you really got to look for. Like right here, the safeties are really far apart. Looks like we might have another cover two, and you have a potential for a one play touchdown against cover two right up the right up the middle with this with the streaking tight end. We'll go ahead and we'll pick some individual coverages. We'll start off with cover two. And you can see, once again, those safeties are so full, far apart, you really can't run cover two against this. As I'm guessing that's what the last defense was that we scored a one-play touchdown against. So you can see it's very capable if you have a fast tight end. You could also go to the B receiver because he's going to get open to the outside, too. That's just the, the, the you know, it's a one-play touchdown potential play to the outside based on the fact there's just so many receivers on this side of the field. It's kind of a cheat code. Next up, we'll choose cover two man. So I'm just going to put the X route on a 10-yard out route. I'm going to put the Y route on a fade. I'm also going to put the A route on a slant because that feels that that helps and also gives me a check down. But you can see that the RB route kind of runs around the jam and really has an opportunity for a one-play touchdown if I can time that a little bit better. So let's go and let's do that again. I do have cornerbacks on all the receivers except for probably Goddard. Although there, I accidentally messed up. But you can see that this route really just gives uh, gives cover two man problems. He just gets wide open over the middle. And he's really bullying the cornerback. For what reason, I don't know. But I didn't even do that play right as I didn't put uh, Goddard on a slant anyway. So let's go and let's see what happens. Like I see, you can see he just gets around. And it, it's just the it's the, the Y route that eventually helps him out and makes this play work out as he, he kind of helps to get uh, Watkins off the press. Go to the replay to show what I'm talking about here. It's the fade in the condensed formation. That's probably why this happens. But you can see they're running into each other, and he just gets in his way and just basically just sets a pick for a very easy play. Next up, we'll choose cover zero. I find it's best to put the A route and the X route on slants, or you could put the X route on like a zig or something. It really doesn't matter. But the A route's going to be my first read. It's going to be a check down. I mean, I could take that if the if they don't, you know, follow that well because the slant is going to get open. But that's not necessarily the best play here either. I find that the Y route is probably slightly better, although I forgot to shorten uh, the route that the X route is running. He didn't catch the ball anyway. It was knocked out. But that's also a good route. Next up, we'll choose... Not sure what I'd do yet. I think uh, cover three. Go ahead and change back to this and go cover three sky. Against cover three, it's running from a hash mark to the open side of the field. Put the X route on a comeback route and put the A route on a streak. And that's all you're going to really have to do. He'll, the streak will hold back the safety while the Y route has an opportunity to get right up the seam there for a one play touchdown catch and run. You probably want to have a little bit of a better receiver than a 90 year old Julio Jones running that. But you can see how that can, um, as I messed it up, you can see how that can uh, can work because the the cover one safety or the cover or the single out safety is over here on this bunch side to try to hold that down. And like I said, you, you just have an opportunity here. If, if you can get that catch and run, you can you can definitely be gone. Next up, we'll choose cover four quarters. Cover four quarters couldn't be easier. You just got to streak the A route, and he'll for whatever reason just not cover the tight end. Uh, and you know, he'll just rather cover one of the shorter receivers. I'm not really sure what's going on there But it looks like um, If I had to guess that the, uh, the, the the free safety is supposed to cover Goddard or something and uh, He just finds out too late about it as the pressure gets home there But uh, it's very easy one play touchdowns cover four is very easy to glitch out when you have four receivers on one side of the field So I'm gonna do that one more time. Like I said, you got to wait. That's probably the hardest part You got to wait for him to pass that safety before you throw the ball uh, But other than that, it's very easy to play Next up, we got the out double under. It's another really, another really good play when it comes to man coverage, as pretty much every route here beats man coverage, except for the B route, which is really just there to pull back coverage. Although you do have the A route, which is a good uh, zone concept route too, as we just drop it in the bucket there. Although that kind of looked like it was a man, I'm not really sure. But like I said, a lot of good man beating concepts. You got your clear out route, which is your Y route once again. Then you got your RB route coming late, which is probably the main. Um, target route there because the the first route is really just to clear the defenders. 
But yeah, all three routes on the right side beat man. The X route beats man and zone too. I mean, the X, this route here can really beat uh, cover three, cover four, any route where the cornerbacks drop back. It wouldn't be cover two, but any man coverage. The out route really beats any man coverage and any zone coverage. Now right here, kind of lose, it kind of wins inside. And uh, you can see, I mean, that was a press cover two probably. And you can see how easily that works. So really every route here beats man except for the B route, which is just pulling back coverage. Next up, we got the QB blast. This is another play. You're gonna wanna make sure you have your ball carrier set to conservative. Anytime your opponent is in man coverage, especially, you can see how spread out the look is. There's no second-level defenders. If there's no second-level defenders, you can run this ball with the quarterback all day. I can flip it with the right stick, too, because I can see that that guy on the one side there is probably going to blitz. Uh, but, yeah, I won't fumble with the ball carry on a conservative, but I won't be able to juke or make people miss either. So, like I said, another man coverage. We don't have to wait for that guy to come down. You can see he's coming down the gap. This is just a really easy play. Anytime you have that, this spread look, um, you know, if you don't have any second-level defenders, you can take it. And even if you do have a second-level defender, like right here, I still got a 5-on-5 five five in the box. So it's really my choice if I want to try it. But it's really best against man coverage is when there's nobody in the box. But like I said right here, once again, I could I could give it a try. It's not going to be as successful nearly, but you can see I can still have success. So it really depends on like the situation. If you only need a couple of yards, I would have faith that you're going to get it. But the truth is, if you have a look like this where there's two guys in the box, this is just a perfect opportunity to switch over to one of your other pass plays. That's really how you run this system. If the box is light, you run it. If the box is heavy, it means there's going to be openings in other places. Next up out of the empty quads, we have the vert double under. So good uh, bunch of man-beating routes to this side with uh, Goddard really there just pulling back the coverage. But uh, you really have two different uh, depths of uh, receivers crossing over the middle, and they cross at different times. So you really can beat zone the same way, but I would say this is probably best to be a man-beating play. As you can see, we keep getting zone coverages in this, this late. You know, that first route is kind of like a clear-out route, and then this late one comes in after. The comeback route, too, is a good man-beating route um, if you have time. As you can see right there, I don't know what kind of blitz that was, but that also beats man. So you really have just three man-beating routes on the right side. Next up, we have the wide receiver screen. I'm going to pick that again. This is another play that's really just about, you know, if, if, if your opponent is uh, dropping back too many guys you can just you know if they can cover three cover four you can or if you have numbers on this side because you have four wide receivers so here you only got two defenders so you could do that all day if you have it's a numbers game if you have four receivers three of them are going to be blockers and only got two defenders in the box you know i could do that all day here we have three receivers in the box probably not going to be as successful but if the blockers hold up you can still get close to five which is what i'm getting so a very good constraint play and then on the other side if you get like a man coverage or a man zero blitz you could always hit that slant as you can see right there so right side i would say be more of a zone play the left side is more of a man play very easy concept you just got to make that decision quick as you can see right there i actually had to hold the ball because that dude shot in he didn't get picked up on the block and i didn't want to necessarily throw an interception so here you can see once again they're falling back if they're falling back you can make that play all day but if they're shooting forward like it was on the last play i wouldn't want to risk it because he could have either blew him up for a loss or maybe even got an interception next up we got the double slant we're going to start off with cover two so i'm just going to put the rb route on a streak and the b route on a flat and you can really attack this tight end to the outside here or the running back as you can see that safety really has to get over for the for that wheel route so you have two options there but you also have the option to the the b route so i'm gonna go ahead and put the i mean i can put the running back on a streak or i can put the tight end uh on a streak i can even put the tight end on a 10 yard out route and a streak to running back to kind of you know have best of both worlds but at the end of the day i just need to make sure that i have the x route over here on a 10 yard out route also and the B route really has a good opportunity to split the safeties there as there's just a lot going on for that safety to basically uh, try to pick up because the, the 10 yard out route will pull them apart and the streak will pull them back. Except we'll pick that again and we'll pick cover two man. This play here pretty much can do the same setup because we're going to go after the same route. The man, the, the Y route and the X route are really good man beaters by the way. I mean they're slants. So those will work against any man coverage but this is pretty much the look here. Just going to go ahead and wait for that B route to materialize one more time. And you can see how we get another very easy one play touchdown. You can motion this guy across and put the Y route on a streak. Say put the, uh, the A route on a 10 yard out route just for shits and giggles. You can also shorten the, uh, the B route with a, um, with a uh, smart route to try to bring it a little bit shorter because that way it'll get open a little bit faster. Because you can see, I mean, Chris Jones is already like right in my face. He just basically like ran over my left guard. So I'm definitely gonna have to uh, double team that guy. But uh, but yeah, I mean, really, you know, you can bring this guy across. Except if I want to hold that corner back down, I mean, I can just do whatever I want there. I can smoke this guy. 
I'm just holding that cornerback down. But like I said, shorting that route can help to get him open a little quicker. And I mean, I didn't know that if I double team Chris Jones, it would just let the fucking defensive end run free. He's not that good. So let's go ahead and let's just slide my protection. Let's try that. Because that was just fucking insane. Let's go and let's do that again. Like I said, I'm trying to just trying to hold it down. So I can get this B route off. As you can see, the safety, um, you know, he was, I mean, that's, it's, it's a good, it's a big play. Uh, as we did get the one play touchdown because you kind of played the ball bad. But you can see how it's still going to work. It's still going to get outside of the safety and on, above the corner. Next up, we're going to do that again. We're going to pick cover three this time. So streak the A route, put the RB route on a pass block, and put the X route on a comeback route. So we're going to do run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field, if I didn't mention that. And the B route here can split the field or can't split the safety in the cornerback as the cornerback stays down on the comeback route. Next up, we'll do cover four, starting off with cover four match. Against cover four, run from a hash mark to the open side of the field, put the running back on a streak, and the B route will get forgotten pretty easily uh, amongst all the uh, all the routes on the right side. So another, you know, cover four is easy to glitch if you know how to manipulate the coverages, but uh, it's very easy. I'll do that again. I said just streak the, the running back and you know i guess once the uh, the running back comes into the safety's area it just completely stops to try to to try to pick that route up rather than take care of the post route i'm guessing that the post route gets passed off to the free safety but it's too late next up we'll do regular cover four let's go to the dollar for that against cover four run from a hash mark to the open side of the field motion across the b route put the y route on the street the x route on a comeback smart route at 10 yards and put the a route on a streak and the rb route on a streak and you're going to see how the b route here can really get open outside and above that cornerback as long as I get a good throw, which I really thought I was going to catch. But you can see how that's very glitchy against cover four. Next up, we have the escape. Yeah, the escape play. Start with Tampa 2. I'm going to put the, uh, the running back on a streak. And put the wire out on a 10 yard out route. And I'll put the X route on just, uh, I'll just put them on a smoke just to, just to hold them down as much as possible. And you can see how we can just split these guys uh, pretty easily with that setup. And also motion this guy across, put him on a streak, put the X route on a five yard, five yard out route. And this will help to get that Y route open up with the cornerback outside for a big play, a big catch and run at least. You do that against pretty much any zone coverage and you should have a moderate success. Next up, we'll do cover three. Streak the tight end and the running back and put the X route on a comeback. I'm going to put the Y route on just a check down. It's just a drag. Um, and I just got to buy time for that B route. As you can see, he gets passed for, uh, you know, one play tutty between the safety and the cornerback because the cornerback's held down by the, the comeback route. And the streaks pull back the center safety. Next up, we'll do... Cover for match. Honestly, this play really doesn't need any adjustments, so I'm gonna put the A route on streak, and the B route will get uh, forgotten completely. Uh, but it actually works decent even without an adjustment. But that's like the the best way to do it. And last but not least, we have cover for regular. Got to go over to the dollar. Streak the tight end. Streak the running back. Put the X route on a comeback, and then put the Y route on like a, a slant or something. Doesn't really matter. But I'm just waiting for this guy to cross the safety and then I just get a really good pass lead and the cornerbacks know where to be found and you already got past the safety so it's just an outside throw but it's really all about the pass lead except we got the inside zone I mean this year if they're not packing the box enough you know it's just a good uh, it's just a good run play it's gonna be best against cover two man in zone as well all right next up we got the mesh spot I'm gonna go I'm gonna go random this here, this is just a very good dink and dunk play. I know a lot of people that really like to throw this running back. Um, I don't typically like to do that. Although you can throw it immediately out underneath a zone cover, as you can see right there. Didn't really work out. Like I said, you can get it out quick though. I mean, this is not a horrible option, but you really got to get out quick. If you wait till it turns off the field, you're going to throw an interception. So, especially against zone coverages or man coverages. But this play is really about the crossing receivers anyway, as these double drags are really the best way to go. And you can, you know, they're not going to always get you a ton of yards, but especially against man coverage, but against zone coverage, these get you a little bit of a better catch and run. And they'll typically clear the center for this guy. So if your opponent, if your user middle linebacker on the defensive side, chases those uh, double drags which a lot of people do you'll typically get the b route open so that's really the number one thing when it comes to this particular play next up we got the power read another read option play 
If the defender waits, keep with the quarterback and go the other way. That's basically the opposite of what it normally is. Uh, normally, if it's a read option and he waits, you got to hand it off here. If he if he crashes in, like right there, I tried to hand it off. I don't know what happened. But if he crashes in there, you got to hold the A button and hand it outside. Let's go. Let's do that again. Like I say, he's waiting. Gonna he's waiting for the handoff. So you basically have to, to keep with the quarterback. If he crashes, he's crashing in at the quarterback. It's really the best way to put it. Right here, waiting. Got to hold it with the quarterback. It's really that simple. If that defensive end waits. You keep it. If he crashes, you hand it off. It's really that simple. I'll try to get a look where he crashes. Like I said, right there. I don't know. I don't know what that was. To be honest with you, <laughs> there was multiple defenders there. But I'll do that one more time. Like I said, I'm waiting for the opposite look. Like I said, right there. He waits. He's going for the handoff. He's going to take that hand. He's going to take out the running back every single time if he waits. So that's basically all I'm saying. I'm waiting for him to get aggressive. Like I say, he keeps waiting. <laughs> keeps waiting. I want to get an aggressive look so I can get the handoff look one time. So right there, We're still waiting. <laughs> so didn't get much. Come on now, let's get a, let's get an aggressive. Let's get a. There we go. Like I said, waiting. He's just waiting every single time. It's not always going to be that way, although it's hard to say right now. There we go, crashing in. Got to hand it away because he's crashing in for the quarterback. And we finally get a look where if he comes forward, you got to hold it and hand it off. Next up, we got red zone scissors. We're going to start off with Tampa 2. The running back's a good play um, to a lot of different things, but against cover 2, I'm just going to streak the A route. And the B route here, uh, we'll split those safeties. As you can see, the, 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 the linebacker in the middle of the field actually has to eventually pay attention because next up, we'll do cover 2 man right there. So I'll streak the running back, put the tight end on a 10 yard out route, put the Y route on a 10 yard out route. And this is going to be the play as I really just need. To split the field here and you can see how there's an opportunity between the safeties and cover two next up we'll do that again but we're going to pick cover one hole i find it's best to probably shorten the b route by smart routing it to try to get them across the field a little bit faster but the b route's the play so you just streak the tight end and then you just need a good throw here to get across that safety you can have a very easy one play touchdown against cover one i don't think i did what i do i didn't do over storm brave yet so i'm gonna go my motion sky cross put the y route on a slant and then, uh, you know, check and release the running back. And that slant there, you can see crossed up the, uh, you just basically caused the two cornerbacks to run into each other. I'm not sure if you'll get that look anywhere on the field. You, sometimes you got to run from a hash mark to the open side. I think that's best. I also think it's best to just put the X round something short because you don't want that defender accidentally, you know, turning into anything. As you can see here, once again, like I say, he just gets in the cornerback's way enough, sometimes better than others. But this is really the best option from this play for cover zero. As you really have a couple different options. So let's go let's do that again. I said hopefully they slam into each other. Slam the brakes. And you know, like I said, it's just you don't need a lot, but um, just anything to just make that cornerback lose acceleration. As I messed up the whole play here. Let's do that one more time just to show some consistency. I'm going to let him get set because the point is I want that cornerback behind that cornerback to run into him. And it looks like it's going to work out just fine here. Although you can see it also works if you just throw it early. Because, um, you know, a lot of times that cornerback is waiting for the out route. Like for him to break out. So if I just throw it before he breaks out, a lot of times he's just going up the field. So let's go and do that one more time. Like I said, there. You know. Now it's just a run to the ball. I mean, he's getting it pretty much every time, and I'm not even really getting the best pass leads. But you can see he's getting passed. Let's pick that again. Do cover three. So I'm streaked to the tight end, put the running back on a wheel. I'm running from a hash mark here too, which is kind of important. I'm going to slide my protection over to try to pick up Chris Jones. And uh, that's pretty much all she wrote because this B route here is going to get open over that cornerback who's getting held down by the comeback route. So we'll do cover four quarters. So runs from a hash, motion sky cross, streak the A and Y route, and put the running back on a wheel. That's all I really got to do. That safety is going to be responsible for that B route, and he knows it because he's just going to be like mad late trying to get over. Uh, but that's fine because that's you know that's the point anyway for my for my offense. Very easy one play touchdown. Next up, we'll choose cover four regular. We got to go to another formation. Then we got to go to the dollar. So let's go cover drop. So I'll streak the A route. That's all I really got to do. And uh, we just got to wait a long time. I mean, there's not much of a pass rush. 
But once the B route gets inside of the safety here, you just basically bullet it and, you know, throw it to the corner because the cornerback is um, held down by the, uh, the comeback route on the left side. Next up, we got the RPO zone peak. The Y receiver is really the play. Um, as long as the receiver or the cornerback doesn't drop down, that's probably going to be your best option. Although there, um, you can see. I mean, you also have the option to run the ball. So if the if the if if it's a man coverage, I would say the the wheel or the um, not the wheel the uh, the Y the Y uh, route there. Like you see right there, he's on it. Like it looked like it was on a blitz. That'll be probably your best option. Or if he drops back after the play starts, meaning he's in a zone coverage, that'll be your best option. This year, I can tell Ray is probably a man coverage. Man's are a blitz if I had to guess. So this will be an opportunity to uh, to run the ball. I'm not going to watch that um, that wheel. I keep calling it a wheel, but it's uh, what, what that is, a bubble. There we go, a bubble screen. See right there, you can see I, I tried to throw it out quick because the, the the guy was blitzing on the run. That's really your read, though. You're really just watching that defender as if, like, right there, he's in a man coverage. So that's I made a mistake. I want to hand it off in that look. If it's a zone coverage, you want to throw it there. If it's a man coverage, you want to hand it off. It's really that simple. So right there, he uh, looked like he fell back on his zone. can definitely take that underneath throw and just get as much as I can. So that's all I'm really watching is that guy there. You can see right there, he drops on the receiver a little bit more than, than usual. So I'm going to keep it with the running back. It's really that simple. There's really not more to the play. I don't really find that the B route is an option too much, although you can see right there, it gets picked off. That's really not what I'm looking. I'm really just looking at these two guys on the other side. Although if you get inside, um, you know, get inside leverage, you could try that route, but I find it's not a very good throw. I feel like the route's too deep, and I don't think I can shorten it as you can actually make it longer, but you can't necessarily make it shorter. But like a cover three, I guess you can shoot it up the seam there before the, the cover three cornerback drops down on it. That'd probably be about it, though. Except we got the RPO zone stick. If it's a zone coverage, you definitely want to throw it to the tight end. If it's a man coverage, you can throw it to the, uh, I don't know if they call that a stick route, whatever that short route is. Kind of looks like a like a smoke route or something like that. The B route. Um, although, you got to make that decision quick because the handoff comes very fast. So, to me, if I run this play, it's really just to go to that tight end because that's the easiest read. And you can see that receiver turns on a blocker. It's really a short yardage play. It's not like a play you're going to get a ton of yards from. Although, you can get a decent play from the tight end. As you can see, that's a man coverage because they're back far enough. It looks like a man's or a blitz. Uh, the guy can turn to, or the, the B receiver can turn to a blocker pretty quick and, and definitely have a lot of value. As, you, like I said, you can see how quickly that handoff is. If you're taking too long to make a decision, this game's going to make a decision for you. But you have a lot of opportunity in the runs as well, as there was a gap there, um, as Chris Jones kind of just like blew the whole play up. But here, like I said, I, I like my looks in the flat. I'm going to take that catch and run, get an easy 10 yards. Um, if the box is light, I might take the run. If the box is heavy, I might take the pass. That's another way to look at it. As you can see right here, we get another man coverage, but I can still get outside because it's a really quick hit in play. So even though it was a man coverage, I can still get to the edge. So a very, uh, very consistent play, running and passing. And last but not least, we have the Y stick dig. Let's go and let's pick that. We'll start off with uh, cover two, cover two, tamp two. A couple of different ways you could do it with tamp two. I'm going to go and motion the ball across, though. One of the ways is to motion across the tight end, put him on a streak, then you put the X route on a drag, and this will basically create a opportunity for the Y route as he gets open outside, although I kind of like, you know, kind of walked into that pressure. You can also motion this guy in. You don't have to motion across the tight end. That's a decent option to put the A route on a drag, although I messed that up because the drag never came, but I, I hiked the ball before I made the drag. But you can see how that can get open outside. Another option is to put the B route on a 10-yard out route, and that will create a throwing lane for the X receiver going the other way. So you really have two different ways. You can attack outside, or you can attack over the middle with the, the double in route there. Play also has success against cover two man. Same setup, really. Just put the B route on a 10-yard out route. The, uh, the wheel route doesn't work as good. But the double in route does, as I threw it way too early before he got across the field. But we're going to do that one more time. I said dragging the A route would make more sense, and blocking the running back would make more sense if you know it's a man coverage. So here we go one more time. The X route's actually lit up now, so it's going to be even easier. As you can see, same results as cover two zone. Next up, we got cover one hole. Against cover one, just put the, uh, the X route on an in, a five yard in. And a lot of times, he can just set a pick. For the Y route, as you can see, he just gets wide open over the top here 
for a very easy one play touchdown based off of the fact that the in route just gets in the defender's way. And it's very consistent because the depth is just perfect. Although there he missed. So if he doesn't get that, you don't want to necessarily. I mean, you can sometimes get it anyway. You can sometimes turn up and run uh, for it. If you're going to do that, though, you pretty much want to put the A route or maybe even the B route on a streak, put the A route on a drag or something. Just something to pull that safety back. As you can see here, we don't even have that set up now and still can have success, although that was an underthrown ball. So if you have a really fast receiver, that wheel route can be successful regardless. But if you don't have a really fast receiver, the in route is going to be the best way to go. As you can see here, it just runs and sets a pick for this receiver. It's just a, it's just a pick play concept. You get a very easy one play touchdown in multiple different ways. You don't really have to motion in the um, the Y route either. I just do that because it gets across the field a lot faster. But you can see how it gets open regardless. It's not really a route that needs motioning. I just want to get open faster than it normally does. Next up, we have cover zero. For cover zero, just check and release the running back. That's all you really got to do. We're going to have the same success with the same route, which is going to be the X route. It's essentially a post route. It's like a double post. And post routes always get open against cover zero. I didn't quite get the one-play touchdown there, but it's still a very big play. You can also drag the, uh, the, the um, you know, give, I can give myself double drags, really. That wheel route doesn't really work here. But uh, you can see how, you know, he still gets inside. I don't know if I check and release the running back. That might be the only reason why that didn't work out. Gonna do that one more time. Like I said, the uh, the wheel route's not really in play. Just gotta wait for that post route, that double post, to get past, and yeah, you know, whatever. He didn't catch it, but you can see how it's a one play touchdown opportunity. I'm just gonna move on. Like I said, we got the buck sweep read option. This player, I'm just gonna watch the read defender. If um if he uh, crashes in, I gotta keep it with the quarterback. If he if he hesitates like that, I either gotta run in the opposite direction or hold a and hand it off, which I tried to do, and he didn't let me do it. Like I said, I, I guess I recognize a little bit late. But that's pretty much the play right here. Like I said, he follows, take it with the quarterback. Probably want to set your ball carrier conservative so you don't fumble as much because that is uh, something that will happen with quarterbacks. Uh, but that's pretty much it. As, like I said, if he's aggressive there, I can go the other way. You can see how Swift even tries to turn into a blocker, which is nice, uh, which you don't see in a lot of other plays. But you have a really, um, you know, wide looping uh, run to both sides here. That um, you know could be a very effective run play with the quarterback, especially if they, if your opponent doesn't set their option defense, which a lot of people will. But I'll force it to the running back as you just a one time to see if you can get a pretty decent carry, looping it in that direction as well. So it's a very explosive run play, especially against defense like cover three, cover four with the quarterback's drop back, and that's what this looks like it might be. As you can see, it lets me get to the edge there, and we get our best run with the uh, the running back yet of about 12, uh, maybe you know close to 15 yards, but a very effective run. Next up, we got the halfback base. Probably the best traditional inside run, but it can also be run to the outside. As you can see, I mean, I can take it really anywhere from the right of the center to the outside, depending on what uh, what I see from the defense. Uh, but you can see we're getting a lot of big holes right up the middle here, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess around too much. If I see that, I'm gonna take that. But if it's not there, like I said, there's always opportunity to bounce it to the outside because this is um, kind of a run play in that direction. Although the cornerback outside, there's nobody really blocking the cornerback outside, which is why I kind of kind of keep turning up field. If I want to get somebody to block outside, though, I can always motion this guy across. It's not necessarily going to be the best option against man coverages uh, because a lot of times they'll pull a defender across. But like I said, if I want to get to the edge, this is going to be an opportunity to do that as we finally get a good run outside. Next up, we got the slip screen. In this play right here, you have a, a good um, secondary option to the to the tight end side on this little flat. Although that really only is going to work against the zone coverage. It looks more like a man coverage. But at least you have a second option. I don't really like running screenplays unless you have a good second option. So against man or zone, the screenplay should work. Although the screenplay is probably going to be best against mans or blitzes. And against zone, you have the uh, the A route here. Which I tried to throw immediately and it didn't even let me get the ball out. I guess I tried to throw it too early. So I'm going to try to force it to the A receiver at least one time just to get a, to, you know, get a good look. But uh, at least you have a second option in case you know, your opponent is jumping the screenplay. Next up, we'll pick the PA bubble Y over and we'll pick uh, cover zero. Put your fastest receiver at the, the fastest time you have at the B spot. Motion them out. And then you can check and release the running back. You can even block the tight end. It really doesn't matter just to pick up the blitz. And you can see how this guy here just runs right past uh, what looks like a cornerback. I mean, he's typically being faced against a cornerback. And you can see it could be a very big play. I'm going to do that one more time. Give myself a check down this time with the Y receiver. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he just kind of runs right past him. 
That is a very big play at the very least, depending on how fast or how good your tight end is. Next up, we get the power read. This player is kind of a reverse read structure. If he stops like he does there, you got to keep with the quarterback and go the other way. Um, if he it crashes in on the handoff, then you hold it and hand it off, which is like said different from normal. Um, although you see, like we're getting uh, we're not getting a lot of opportunities here. It almost looks like the it's always focusing on the handoff. As we finally get one right there, where I can hand it outside, and it's not necessarily the best uh, look anyway. So it's a good run play, but. Um, it's definitely not the best information. You can definitely add this um, to your arsenal. As you can see, the best option might be to keep it with the quarterback. And then once again, if you're going to run with the quarterback a lot, uh, make sure to put your ball carrier conservative. Uh, but that's pretty much it. As you can see, I mean, you're pretty much taking away the uh, the handoff every single time. Uh, which, you know, if you run this play, you'll be running with the quarterback quite a, quite a bit. Next up, we have the Ravens double post. So I'll go ahead and I'll choose cover two first. Against cover two, you got a couple options. You can motion this receiver across, put the B route on a streak, and then put the A route on a flat. And this Y receiver will get open above the cornerback and outside the safety for a very big play. You can also motion in the X receiver, put the Y receiver on a slant, the RB running back on a um, on a streak, block the A route, and then put the B tight end on a 10-yard out route. And that should be all you need there. As long as you can buy time, as Chris Jones is being a bit of an issue, but you can see how you can split the safeties deep there uh, as he kind of, you know, came into play. But it definitely won't play touchdown, cap more, won't play touchdown capable than the first play. Next up, we'll choose cover two man. The running back is naturally a cover two man play. As you can see, he just runs right past the linebacker when he turns up field. Um, not necessarily always going to be a one play touchdown, but definitely a big play as it's really more. Um, you know, if he doesn't run out of bounds, but you can see the second he turns up field, the, the linebacker can't flip his hips. So you got an opportunity there. But the best setup is once again going to be to run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field. And then motion this guy in. Put the Y receiver on a slant, streak the running back, put the B receiver on a 10 yard out route, and block the tight end. It's going to be the same setup. We're going to have pretty much the same results. As you can see, the uh, receiver is now inside leverage to start the play and you can see we actually get a one play touchdown that time even though the, the coverage was kind of kind of tight next up we'll choose cover one hole it's another play where the running back is going to be a big play once he turns up field you can see once again the the linebacker can't flip its hips fast enough and you can have a one play touchdown capable play by doing that you can also motion this guy in and put him on a fade and that'll help to get the y receiver open now if i'm going to do this Probably want to double team, give myself some additional blocking. Um, and then you can see how the wide receiver just gets wide open because the, the two receivers start the play so close together that that's what the fade really does. It really knocks the coverage cornerback off the Y route really well. So you can see, like I said, whenever you got plays where they start like this, he's run that fade. Look how he just sets a pick. How that defender just sets a pick and he's just wide open by about 10 yards. And then everything else here is a good check down. There's a lot of good uh, check down routes. You see this route actually is a pretty decent man cover one play even without any adjustments. Um, it's just not nearly as effective as the motion. As you can see, the cornerback the was there. So that Y route definitely is a good route. Next up, we got cover zero. So I will pick uh, over some brave. Now, the running back's a good option underneath just about anything. You can see right here, if I throw that out right away, a lot of times the cover cornerback's nowhere near to be found. That's going to get open against just about any coverage, man or zone. But once again, you can motion this guy in, take advantage of that any number of ways. Um, I can put the X receiver on a um, on a route, and you can see how that helps to set that pick once more, one more time by putting the X receiver on a fade like I did with the cover one hole. You see it gets wide open that way. Next up, we'll choose cover three. This play is a good concept to the running back simply by putting the B route on a streak. You can see how the cornerback over here kind of man matches. Uh, you don't really have to put the, the tight end on a streak, but I do feel like it helps if you streak this B route because the um, that cornerback is going to match the post route, and then this guy is going to match the running back late, giving you at least a very big play, close to 40 yards there. If you motion across the tight end and put him on a streak, though, it does help to get that running back open even better because now it'll occupy the deep zones more. 
and you can see how you could have um, you know maybe more success to the point where you might be able to get that one play touchdown next up we'll choose cover four match the running back's a good play against cover four match once again as you can see the second he turns up field he usually loses position although i might have threw that a little bit early you can also motion this guy in here put the y receiver on a 10 yard out route or a slant i actually think works a little bit better uh, is that's going to just create um, you know, some separation for this guy here. As you can see, the cornerback that's supposed to cover him as we carry this team to what looks like might be a touchdown. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, but if it, it looks like the um, this outside cornerback here has to cover the post route, and he figures it out pretty late. So if you got a little bit of a speed advantage, you should be able to, to get a very easy one-play touchdown here. Next up, we'll get the RPO zone peak. It's just a good outside run. I don't really find like you have enough time to, um, you know, try to do any of the other options. I just find using this like a like an outside um, sweep or an outside zone is probably the best way to go as you get pretty good blocking. Uh, and I just don't find you have enough time to reliably pass either one of the receivers without, you know, forcing it or could potentially throwing an interception. You do have like the, uh, you know, what's the point of that? You, know, you have to throw it out so quick it just doesn't make any sense. Um, the slant is probably in too much danger, although you can throw these out. It is optional. I just don't find that you really, I find the risk isn't worth the reward, uh, as this is probably better just treat like an outside run. Next up, we got the buck sweep. It's probably the best play, because you have both your guards pulling, um, and they'll typically clear a very good path to the edge. As you can see, I get 10 yards on the first try very easily. Uh, one of my favorite run plays in the game, actually, because of the double pulling guards. And they usually do a pretty good job of hitting their marks. As you can see right there, if they don't, you just stretch it outside anyway. As it's basically the, the first guard didn't hit his mark, so I had to, had to just keep stretching it out. But, um, but yeah, I mean, there, I don't know, 51, I guess he wasn't targeting that player. I thought he was. But, uh, but this is probably the most explosive and consistently... Um, you know, good run in the formation is I don't know how this dude, I'm about to say, how's that dude going to catch me? As you can see, we got a one-play touchdown run there. Like I said, this is, to me is probably the best run play in the entire game. Next up, we got the double ins. Every route here is a man-beating route except for the check and release uh, running back. That's going to be like your one zone beater. Everything else is pretty much just for man coverage, although the curls will also beat cover three and cover four zones. I didn't pick man, I kind of just picked random. But uh, you can see how we get some opportunities here as we, as we slip that in. Uh, but yeah, it's a really simple play. Everything beats man except for the check and release running back. Next up, we have the halfback base. So you're going to want to follow the pulling guard. But this is a play where you really can go inside or outside. As you can see right there, if I went up in that hole, that DB would have, or that uh, safety probably would have stopped me. Last but not least, we got the PA post dig shot. We'll go ahead and we'll pick that. We'll start off with cover two. Again, it's cover two. Motion this receiver in, put the Y route on a streak, and then put the B route on a 10 yard out route. And that'll be enough to pull the safeties apart. So that this X route can get open right over the middle. As you can see, I probably threw that a little bit late. Got a little too close to the strong safety, but still a very easy play. Next up, we'll choose cover two man. So same setup. Wheel the uh, wheel of running back, motion in A.J. Brown. Put the B route on a 10-yard out route. Although you could also do that with the, uh, the other receiver. It really doesn't matter, but you can see how it's the same thing. When I motion him in, he gets inside release, and it makes it even easier for him to get across. Next up, we'll choose cover zero. Same deal. Just check and release the running back this time. That's all you really got to do. And, uh, you know, the, the post route here is just going to get open once he, once he breaks inside. It's really that simple. Post routes do a, do a very good job of, of beating cover zero. Next up, we'll choose cover one. Same idea with cover one as far as the RB route. Once he goes in this dead sprint, we'll usually get open. So you have that option. <clears throat> but you can also motion this guy in, put the Y receiver on a wheel. The wheel route will get open uh, against cover one. Typically, it's a very good cover one route in your, in your audible. So you can always just use that because that post route will pull the safety across. To, to get him uh, out of the way but you can also throw to the post route who will get across the safety the same way once i motion him in like this you know you can see how um, he gets inside release again on the uh, cornerback and just gets across the field for a very easy one play touchdown next up we'll choose cover three so it runs from a hash to the short side of the field most this guy in put the running back on a wheel put the b receiver on a comeback route i'm gonna put the, the tight end on a check and release block because i don't want him on an island blocking that guy i'd much rather 
Oh, tackle, do it. And then you can see how this guy crosses. Although I got a stupid jumping animation, but you can see how he could cross for a potential one play touchdown. Most this guy in, put the running back on the wheel, put the B receiver on a comeback. And I just have to buy time in the pocket until um, the X receiver crosses. And then you can see I can get an easy one play touchdown. Why did he jump for that though? Whatever. You can see that it looks like it, it definitely had plenty of clearance. Next, double choose cover for match. Pretty much the same setup. I'll put the uh, the A around a 10 yard comeback though, or 10 yard whatever. But really, the running back is a good play here, as he'll get matched with a linebacker a lot of times. And you can see how they don't really keep up. Motion this guy out though, or um, go get myself a dragging check down, I guess. But yeah, doing it like this. The X receiver on the post typically will get going too because he gets inside release. And the post routes just do a pretty good job against that type of defense. And then last but not least, we have cover for regular, cover for drop. Put the Y receiver or the Y running back on streak. And that will help to get the X receiver open over the top of the, uh, the strong safety once he gets inside of the free safety. Uh, running from a hash mark to the uh, short side of the field the same way. Next up out of the gun, we'll have true week. We have the power read. There's another play you're going to watch that defensive end. If he hesitates, you keep him with the quarterback. Have your ball carrier set conservative so the quarterback doesn't fumble. But if he if he crashes in on the handoff, like right there, um, if he that's him hesitating once again. If he crashes in on the handoff, that's your opportunity to hand it off. He plays aggressive, like right there, and they can take it outside. But you know these these power replays, I don't find that they're great. They're they're good run plays to, to mix in, as you can see right there. Um, we're just getting caught up, but it's it's a good it's probably the best run play to the quarterback, and that'll be where you have your most opportunities anyway, unless people set their um, their defense to um, conservative for for stopping the quarterback. Then you'll get more opportunities to hand it off to the running back. So this actually will use that against itself. Next up, we get the Y lead read option. So another play you're gonna to want to watch the read defender. Um, if he crashes in on the handoff like he did there, you just keep it with the quarterback. As you can see, Dallas Goddard there does a good job of um, you know sealing that edge. These these lead read options are really good plays. Like this one here, I can probably keep it with the quarterback regardless, just because of that that tight end coming back across. But realistically, you still have to make that read properly. So here we get a look where he stays home, and I tried to hand it off. I guess I just did a little bit too late. But you can still take it up the field. You know where to go if that guy's waiting. Um, as you can see right there, and then, like I said, this uh, this fullback here as the lead blocker is really what makes the play special. Although I obviously had Bolton follow me there as well. Instead of here, you can see I, I made the mistake one more time of not handing it off, as I'm trying to just hand off one time before I finish this and move on to the next area. I mean, you can hand off because as I'm going away from that defender anyway, you can hand off at any point in time, but it really doesn't matter. As you can see, he won't be able to catch up. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.